What's up Dragon Nation, I'm Rich with Dragon Nation Gaming. Welcome back to Space Engineers Tutorials. Last episode we went over the starter base, the stationary starter base. This episode we want to go over the option in case you decide to build yourself a mobile base. Let's go ahead and get this started. Now, one thing that a lot of people like to do is they like to go really big when they start building ships. You don't need to, especially if you're a solo player. If you're a solo player, I recommend ships like this one. This is the yellow respawn ship we've had for a long time in the game. Unfortunately, it's no longer in the game. But there are blueprints on the Steam Workshop, thank God. But yeah, if we go in, as you can see, we have plenty of room in here for a bed. We have some seats, we have medical room. It's kind of cool because the front of the ship, like from this line forward, is everything for living. Now from there, or for survival, my bad, not for living. From that line right there back is everything you need for production, power, all the mechanical stuff. So what I want to do is I want to show you how the mechanical stuff is built to give you an idea of what you can do and how compact you can make things. This thing is actually pretty awesome. So the first thing we need to start out with is a refinery. Now like I, I try to emphasize to everybody is the most important thing about building is making sure you pay attention to the access points. That's where this design comes in very very handy. So if we actually turn it this way, is that right? Yeah, that's right. So we have, these are where the access points are. So let's say this is the front of the ship. So we have the access point here on the top. We have one that is opposite on the bottom, which you can't see because it's blocked right now. We have this one, which will be in the front of the ship. And this one on the opposite, which will be in the back of the ship. Next thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and connect up the assembler. And we're just going to make sure that the access point on the side of the assembler matches the refinery, the one on the top. Just like that. Alright, next thing we need to talk about is we're going to need to connect a lot of stuff up to the center of the ship. We're going to need reactors, we're going to need an O2 generator. Actually, I think that's it. <laughs> just O2 generator and reactors. So what I want to do is I want to go ahead and take a conveyor junction and put it right here. So that way I have a few places that I can connect to. Now the next thing we're going to need to talk about is oxygen. So of course we're going to go ahead and grab the O2 generator, O2H2 generator. I'm going to make sure that the access point is facing to the left, just like that, towards the uh, Bear junction also make sure that the part that doesn't have the access is on the left so that way we fill in that space just like that so now we still have two places uh two spaces open for that conveyor junction now the original design of the ship only had one small reactor for power but it was not enough not even for vanilla thrusters so i went ahead in my own design and i added two more now if I put them in an L shape one thing you got to be careful of when you're messing with the uh, large grid uh, small reactor is it only has two access points one right there and the other one on the one on the left one on the right and they set up in an L shape so if you're a little creative like this you could go ahead and put them kind of in a circle 
uh, it's, it's kind of a pain in the ass sometimes, but you could do it. Now, this spot right here, you have a couple of different options. One is you can, if you can figure out how to make an airtight, you can put a vent right here. So let me go ahead and grab that real quick. The problem is, is I don't think the vanilla one will work. So if I put it right here, as you can see, the vent has this spot right here, which is open. And I don't think that is airtight, or at least the last time I tried it, it didn't. It wasn't. So the old design, what it had was it had a cargo container right there. But since it is a starter ship, you don't really need to make sure that it's airtight. You just need to make sure that you can get to the O2H2 generator to get oxygen. Now the way I had this set up was I had a mod which had oxygen tank. It was a one by one by one oxygen tank, one block by one block by one block. Now the vanilla oxygen tank for a large grid, if we go ahead and pull that out, it is a one by one by two. So there's not enough room. So I can't really use that one. But if you wanted to, you could put the oxygen tank here and maybe put the vent right there. It's all up to you. And I'll show you here in a little bit the different options that you have when we start going over the inside. So let me grab the cargo container. I just put the cargo container there. Uh, so if you're not using a mod, this is I left this open in case I did decide to use it. If not, I don't need that spot, so I'll just go ahead and fill it in Bear Junction. Alright, next thing we need to worry about is, of course, power. Like I said, I like to use batteries so that way I'm not wasting uranium. So this thing... Uh, if we take a look at batteries, I'll show you here in a second. Uh, I think next episode, or here in a couple episodes, we'll be going over the different types of power in the game. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put down three batteries. The reason for that is if we go into the control panel, if we check out... Why do I have four? Oh, because it's the other station. That's right. Uh, if we go ahead and select the battery, it will show you that the max output for a battery is 12 megawatts. If we go down to a reactor, max output is 15 megawatts. So there's only a 3 megawatt difference between a small reactor and a battery. Which means the batteries almost have the same amount of power. It requires three of those small reactors for the amount of thrusters I could put this on. If I add modded thrusters, which I usually do. So I just go ahead and put three batteries. It's all good. It's fine. So of course the next thing, since this is going to be a ship, we're going to need ourselves a gyro. Or gyroscope, sorry. Now, you won't be able to maneuver your ship without that. So don't forget that, but don't worry, we all forget that. There hasn't been one time I haven't forgot to put a gyroscope on. Alright, now that this is a starter ship, next thing you'll need to do is you will probably take this out to go try to find the ores that you need in order to build. So the next thing we want to grab is the detector. Put it right there. All right, now when you're mining by hand, a tool that is very good to have. When we did the initial mining, I showed you how the stone or the uh, ores, after you dig them out, they like to float off. Now what you can do is you could go ahead and put a gravity generator on this ship. And what that will do is the ores that are floating are affected by gravity. So if you put a gravity generator right there, the ores will start falling towards uh, the ground. Then what you do is we go ahead and find our miner right here. And then just dig yourself out a little hole, a funnel kind of thing. Oh, I have no power. Where's my medical room? There it is. So even though I am in creative, I still need power because it's a uh, survival map, but I'm using a hack to get into creative. Yeah, now that we have gravity, if I go ahead and dig a hole, as you can see, the ores no longer flow down into the space, they just fall down in the hole. 
So when you're using that, just go ahead and create yourself a little funnel. And then, just dig outward. Keep going around in a circle and uh, keep going further out as you go around. And there you go. That's it. Gravity generator helps for that. So the other thing you got to think about is at some point your ship may become damaged. Uh, maybe you got attacked or maybe you did something stupid like, like I always do. Uh, might also be helpful to have yourself a projector. So that way you could run the projector and be able to repair a little bit faster, a little bit easier. You know where everything is. You have to make sure it's lined up correctly. Like that. So the next thing you want to go ahead and put on the station, because it might be kind of useful to have, is a program block. There might be a script that you want to use. So I go ahead and put on a program block, and I will put that right here in this spot that is still open. Now, at there was a point back in the history of Space Engineers when you needed a timer in order to run that program block. It doesn't need it anymore. But I do it anyways, because I could use that timer for other things. Don't know what. There's many things you could use it for. You could figure something out. And there you go. So that right there is the mechanical part of the ship. Now one thing you might also notice is the entire thing is square. It's modular. That's that's why I set it up the way that I set it up. So that way I don't have to put it on that design right there. I could put this on a station instead of that or I could put it in any ship I want and it only takes up a little bit of room. So it takes up a 3 by 3 by 4. That's it. So just creative things you could do if you think about it. Now there is one issue with the original design of this ship. The medical room is sitting right here and as you see it is not connected to any conveyor so that's not a conveyor up there and that's not a conveyor down there. Which means that medical room has no access to oxygen or hydrogen which is the way it was set up when it first came out. But if you want to go ahead and add that, you have these access points right here you can connect to. You just put it up against in here. Uh, go ahead and put it up against that wall right there. <laughs> you, could have, uh, you could have a medical room with oxygen. Probably over on this side. Not sure. But if you have bottles, you don't really need it. Just, just fill up your bottles whenever you need more oxygen or hydrogen. Not a big thing, big thing. You just need the medical room for power and uh, health if you lose health for some reason. So yeah, one thing I did do to this ship, originally this right here used to be an armor block. It was actually this one right here, a slope. And it used to be setting like that. Now the reason, I don't know why they did that, because, oh, uh, you know what, I know why. Back in the day, we didn't have windows. All we had, let's see, it, it's actually, I think it's still called a window. Yeah, diagonal window. This is all we had, the, win the vertical window and the diagonal window. We did not actually have glass windows. There was also no oxygen in the game either, so it didn't really matter. So that right there was actually that pane right there. So it was not airtight and you didn't have much of a view. Now imagine if you get into the seat with the original version, this is all that you can see. You can't see the left, you can't see to the right. With my design, see a little bit further, just a little bit. Not a whole lot, but it's a better view than it was before. Now, the weird thing is, these thrusters, if I turn on my light so you can see them, that right there is airtight. I mean, you wouldn't think it would be, because it doesn't look like it is, but, yep, that is airtight, especially that little corner right there. It's weird, man. It really is. 
but if you close the door we now have an airtight room where if we had a vent we could get oxygen into this cabin but unfortunately we don't so that's why usually I'll put a vent right here which means I would need to figure out another location for the cargo container which there's options then of course right on the top we have a connector which is connected to the access point on the assembler now a modded there is a modded cargo container which gives me a three by three by one or one by three by three cargo container which i actually put right there a little bit more space as well uh then of course on the bottom of the ship there is another cargo or connector sorry now the reason that i do that is because i have two ships that i use with this uh, respawn ship up on the top i will have a mining ship docked at the bottom i'll have a construction ship a welder ship at the bottom or vice versa miner at the bottom construction ship at the top doesn't really matter so the cool thing the coolest thing about this is it's not much bigger than the space pod it's it's well it's actually exactly the same size so it is no it's like one block higher but that's not actually a block that's just where the connector is uh one block lower because of where the connector is so it's still three uh width it's not as wide that is five no it is as wide that one's five wide this one's five wide length we have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven this one is one two three four five six seven eight nine ten so it's actually shorter that's actually kind of cool so it's pretty much the exact same size as the space pod but it has the room for a regular refinery and a regular assembler and still has more thrusters than that ship has so that's why i like this design so much it's more compact but it's still it's an awesome ship i i, I still hate that they got rid of it that does piss me off but anyways so this is one of the options that you have when you're trying to build yourself a respawn ship to replace the uh, space pod now you can go ahead and dock up your miner or your construction ship take them with you to go get those resources and let them process as you're gathering the resources next thing we need to talk about is power and the reason we're talking about power is because power is one of the most important things you have in the game without power you can't do anything you can't survive you can't build you can't do you can't respawn without power so it's probably the next most important thing to go over and i gotta I gotta remember everything. I've done a video on power before, but I gotta remember every little detail so that way I don't miss anything. But we'll see how that works out in the next episode. Until then, make sure to like and subscribe, all that good stuff. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.